What's going on, y'all? What's going on, my guys? The rap critic and views. We are about to get our brains rocked with with a third of rap in there. Uh, just, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, how how are you doing, views? What's what's going on on your end? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. What I hate though is that the audience can experience why I thought your intro was especially funny because of how your cell phone sounds. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's got a little digital effect to it, a little distortion mm. that would sound a real nice on a record, but mm. yeah, it just sounded kind of goofy to where I think <laughs> I understood what you were humming, but I'm not, I'm not 100%. I'm like 90%. The people will know uh, because... Uh, you know, we're we're doing a couple of rock albums today, and you know, mm. I just I just didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I just didn't feel like I was the perfect voice for it. You know, so I know I know you're gonna have your expertise that you're bringing to it, but I I just thought maybe I could ask a, a guest or two to come through. You know, may, maybe. And uh, are they are they in the studio? Uh, what? Do we oh. go? <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> So, um, <laughs> some guy called, uh, Rap Critic asked me to do a review of, uh, the thing, cause, uh, some album, cause, uh, <laughs> they said, uh, <laughs> cause, um, <laughs> cause someone requested for, uh, the guy who reviews rap songs to review a rock album, and, uh, <laughs> he, he said I was so good for it that he wanted to ask me, uh, <laughs> I, th- I think he was doing it for the I- iron, uh, so- some type of a metallic thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here I am. Uh, what, 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 what do you need? Uh, I'm here with Muez to talk about uh, an album requested by D- Dr. Goatman. <laughs> Sounds cool. <laughs> <sighs> I, I know you're not like on FaceTime or anything, but I couldn't even <laughs> look at the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like in a small ball turned away from the phone i can't let rc see my face i can't let him oh boy yeah about that <laughs> there we go. about all I'm so, of that i'm so wondering it was like oh i should drop it you know I, this feels mean i don't want you know, it sounded like the Hell's Bells intro riff when you did it. But yeah, now I hear it. Uh, I was just thinking, it was like, it's two rock albums. I was like, what, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> you know? Butthead wore an ACDC shirt, didn't he? Well, see, I was thinking about bringing out a butthead for the second one, you know, so, you know. We, we oh, can only get them on I one, don't know? think that's necessary. <laughs> they, they got a new show that they're doing, you know what I'm saying? We can only get them for so much time. <laughs> I know I know you're so busy. You've got so much on your plate. I don't want you to exert yourself more than you need. <laughs> My dude, I think you're doing just fine. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, okay. but, um... Yeah, Who's yeah. it? Uh, Dr. Goatman requested uh, the Under Oath album, correct? You That's said? right. Lost in the Sound of Separation by Under Oath. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, in the past couple years, my, my tastes have been expanding a bit more into jazz, more into abstract jazz, more mm. into noise. Just a bunch of... Expanding your, your musical palette. Yes, into the um, atonal side of things. The mm. things that just don't sound great to <laughs> the average ear. Not to say mine is better or worse. No, challenging music, you know. But um, I also have listened to a little bit more of the like the hardcore, some more of the emo stuff, more than what I've used to before. Um, but Under Earth was never really one I'd um, took a whole lot of time to check out. But I knew they've been around for a minute. So to see that this one... <laughs> was a 2008 release. I knew that um, I'd never heard anything off this. And talking to Dylan, who I guess is my uh, Beavis and or butthead in this situation, (laughs) um, I asked him, I was like, hey, uh, you ever listen to any Under Oath? And he goes, oh yeah, I listened to like their first three albums, which are like early 2000s. And he goes, "Uh, but they changed their sound dramatically after that. And I listened to... A little bit of 
I forget the name of the album. It's the one with the person with the face. And I listened to that a little bit and I was like, oh yeah, that, that, that does sound different. And that even sounds different than what I'm hearing here. Like this is a whole different plane of what I'm used to experiencing. And I voted to put this first, mainly because I don't have too terribly much to say about it. I will admit I did punch out though <laughs> after nine tracks. I think I think there were two left, but oh wow! I, I took a look at myself. I said, "Self, I think you've." You took a look heard. at that corn album, and you. Huh? <laughs> I said, "You took a look at that corn album." I took a look at life is peachy. Took a look in the mirror. Um, and I said, "Ooh, baba ima, uma ima." Uh, <laughs> And I just thought to myself, like, you've already heard everything you're going to hear over the next couple tracks. Like, I liked it enough, but it got really samey for me. And I got really bored towards the end because <sighs> everything I liked about the songs early on, I was hoping that there would be more uh, diversity throughout. And I just kept getting hit with the same thing. I, like, I was sitting here thinking, whoa, I really like how this dude is able to go from, like, g guttural screaming to... Right. On the drop of a dime, switch it to, like, a little bit more of, like, a sweeter, almost like a higher register singing. And I was like, wow, yeah, you know? that dynamic is cool, yeah. I do like that. But you can't just give me... Like, I'm, I'm the Larry David meme right now. Yeah. I'm that gif. I'm like the... <laughs> like, not, like 12 tracks of the same thing. I just got tired of it. And they all like start immediately like a the baby song. Like, <laughs> like they're all just like, <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. It doesn't really feel like the last song ended. Like, it just feels like, is this just part two to the song? You know? <laughs> that happens a bit on this album and the Pantera album. And oh, yeah. <laughs> also to draw a parallel. Uh, both of these albums do deal with um, dealing with addiction, which, you know, I think that's admirable. I think that's, you know, great that you came out the other side of things and you're able to reflect on it. And I don't have any problem with any of the lyrical content. It's just, I don't know, man. I have a hard time taking in, and this is 100% on me. This isn't a critique of the album. This was 100% on me. It's harder for me to take in the lyrics when when they're being screamed at me like this hmm. than when they're being sung. Like, I just, if for some reason, it just goes over my head, I think. Like, even when I'm reading it, it's just kind of hard to... It's hard to kind of follow along sometimes. I can enjoy it for what it is for the most part, but it does, like, the 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 sameness and, like, the... And there's a certain level I'm like, well, you know, this is rock to a certain audience, right? So, like, you know what I'm saying? So for me to be like, well, it kind of sounds samey, but, like, there's still a level of me that's like, but no, when I listen to, like, System of a Down, when I listen to, like, Corn, like, the reason why I get into them is, like, is because not... The songs don't just sound the same from one to the other, right? Like... You know, there is different things that feels like we're in a different place from this song to this song. And mm. with, with this album, there was one track in particular called Emergency Broadcast, The End Is Near. This track, I feel like, did the best of giving you the atmosphere of what it felt like all of the other tracks were also doing. But this just kind of did it the best way. You know what I mean? I agree. That was definitely one of the <clears throat> that was definitely one of the better ones, I thought. I feel like I should feel some variation in it. And even though, like, because like I said, it, his voice is cool and th it's not like it doesn't change any dynamic at all, you know, but it's just, I I'm just, I'm not pulled. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not yeah. inspired, you know, to be like, oh, but this track, you know, like, because I'll, I'll do a thing where it's like, I get to the end and then like, I'll listen to an album and it's like, okay, do I really remember what happened in this track versus this track? You know, like, I'll, I'll like pull out like what the hook is and be like, do I actually remember this hook? You know, because if you can remember a hook, then it's a like, oh, this calls me back. Now I remember enjoying that song, you know, but when it's just like, this is, you know, solid musicianship, you know what I'm saying? Not dunking oh, on for, sure. for that at all, but you know, there's still gotta be s something that, 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 you know, brings me to love. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that wakes me up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, when when you're keeping this level of intensity for so much of the album. Yes, it's it, so much on 10. Yeah. Th that the parts that end up being the most memorable are 
the times when you bring it down. Like, there's there's a couple songs in here where I think, um, which song was it? Yeah, and then I'm thinking, like, do I actually like the song, or do I just like that it changed, you know? like <laughs> There was one that ended with just straight up, like, singing, and there was, like, no screaming at the end, and it was, like, such a dramatic switch to the sound that I was like, oh. Yeah, it was uh, the Created Void. Really strong track, I thought, and I liked how delicate in comparison. Yeah, yeah. The ending was. But, yeah, I really liked the instrumentals. The music was great. I didn't have any problem with that, but even that kind of got a little uh, redundant for me. Just no real standouts is the problem. Like, when... With, like when you said like with Evanescence or like with some other emo bands when you're like, like we talked about this on the Carissa's Weird or whatever album where it was like really emotional gripping lyrics but they were being delivered so low key that he couldn't really get it yeah. when everything is just being rah, 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 like revving up revving up revving up right. and then a little bit of singing revving up revving up a little bit of singing it's like I can't differentiate the f- the mood you're trying to go for when it all is delivered the same way. Yeah, like I said, yeah, everything felt like end of the world song, but just not as good as the track four version of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the very last track had a, you know, it had to switch up, you know, purely because like there was, it was mostly music for most of it. And then like at the end, you kind of get this verse about him being like, you know, I, I I was the last man on earth and they said I couldn't find anything, but I found something. I found God, I found peace, I found, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of a, you know, cool thing there. And uh, and too bright to see, too loud to hear. I think uh, there's one part where he goes like, good God, can you still get us home? Where it kind of like, you can like, hits the little drum thing that echoes a little bit more that, mm. that kind of stood out a little bit. So yeah, you, you tuned out right before uh, a bit of variation was actually out of in there. Of <laughs> course. That is, of course that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I do regret that. I was just so burnt out, man. Like I got to admit. And again, this is just personal preference and I know everyone's gonna, you know, take a drink. <laughs> you can hear they almost like spit their words out. <laughs> And it's it's hard to explain, but it always kind of irks me a little bit. So that was a hurdle I think overcome. And I, but, I'm not going to lie, like listening to two rock albums that like go very hard, you know, as we'll get to in a minute. Like after listening to Pantera do their thing, anything on this did just kind of feel like a step down. Like it just felt hmm. like loudness in general. Like it's still like on the same level, but just blander feeling you know like i just couldn't help but feel that way and i was like maybe it was unfair because i listened to that rock album first and then to this one so it just kind of felt like oh we're continuing the exact same mood in a certain way but just with that one it felt like well we'll get to it but like yeah so i don't know i and it's dang shank because dr goatman uh requested both of these so it's like hey what do you think about this one what do you think about this one and it's like uh well this one was okay i guess uh it kind of felt like it was doing what the other one was doing but two decades later and not as cool <laughs> like, you know yeah we, like we definitely are getting uh like i said before dealing with uh substance abuse problems and also dealing with like religion as sort of like a coping mechanism yeah, and, and a isolation way of, and stuff like that yeah yeah so very thematically um similar in that way and i i thought they were both pretty intense i didn't think that this was a um a step down in that regard i just think that pantera album had a good bit more diversity in sound and songs that were actually more meat on the bone yeah more meat on the bone songs that I remember walking away from it being like, oh yeah, I remember these being definite standouts and I remember what happened in these. It just felt like the same things happened in all these songs over and over again to where it all just kind of uh, blended together, unfortunately. Yeah, you know what it is? It's like, it's the way I feel about like J. Cole. Like J. Cole is someone who is hard to imitate because he is doing something that is unique to what his style is. But at the same time, I totally get how that's kind of boring because even though it's his style that no one can imitate, it's still just like this low key thing that feels like it's the same from track to track. And even though it's like very skillfully done, like, can we get some diversity out of this bitch? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a hard place to be like, you are talented, but I'm just not interested. <laughs> like, you <yeah>. know? <laughs> 
I'm, I'm gonna try to go back and listen to some of the older albums because I didn't even know this album existed. Like it came out so late. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's 2022, yeah. but I didn't realize they even had an album that came out in 2008. So I might go back try to listen to some of the uh, some of the older ones. See if I don't know. I, I just thought this one was um, was kind of generic sounding, like generic yeah. hard rock kind of. Yeah, and, um, and by 2008, you'd think there would be some sort of, you know, inspiration to expand, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, especially with all the lyrical stuff that you'd think, you know, but, you know, I I, I feel bad that I didn't listen to the last two songs, so it doesn't feel like a, a complete rating. You listen to most of it, I mean. <laughs> it, it's somewhere between a three and a half and a four, though. Like, I, st- I still think it's a solid, you know, listen. I gave it a three and a half because, like I said, there's certainly musical competency in that, but like I can't act like just because it's competently made that I like it, you know? Like, and I've said this before, but if you take any song off this album out of context and I listen to it, it'd be like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Right, right. It's just that That's there were so many too. of the same thing that it just started to blend together. Like, yeah, anything on a random playlist of hard rock or whatever, like probably would hit different, but song after song after song just kind of eventually yeah. wore down on me, I think. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, I, I was honestly feeling that way about, like, a lot of the song. Like, in the way you treated the album was the way I was treating, like, listening to the songs where I'd be like, I'm about two-thirds of the song. And, and, like, when I go through, like, my second listen, you know, the first time I just, like, listen to it all the way through. But then the second listen where I'm just like, yeah, I'm not gonna like it anymore after the first, <laughs> you know, two-thirds. I don't need to, you know? like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... But it's it's okay. Just not it's not uh, it's not inspiring me to be like, oh, I gotta see what what else this guy's doing. You know. Yeah. From there, we're going to Michael Adamvich's request for Space Bar by Your Old Droog. RC, you sent me a message earlier today that I was unaware of because I honestly, before this came up, had never heard of Your Old Droog. So. What do you have any little bit of a background info on this dude? Um, for him, I actually didn't really know that much about all I knew is that the there was the phenomenon of, hey, uh, is Nas releasing music pretending to be this uh Russian guy? And then it kind of being like, no, he just actually just kind of sounds like that. Oh. <laughs> and so he got a whole bu- uh, he got a really big boost off of the idea that, you know, because he wasn't known, like he was just some guy rapping. And so people, but you know how the internet likes to be like, "Oh, is it just some guy rapping? I think it's actually not." Cuz come on. I mean, listen to the lyricism, listen to the way he's doing. And like meanwhile, this guy's like ego must have getting must have been getting pumped up so fucking much like, "Oh my god, these motherfuckers think I'm not." <laughs> now, remember that a uh, Russian uh rapper we listened to a couple of years ago but their name sounds like the name of a mixtape or something like that remember that not rav uh, no <laughs> yeah no no yeah not rav not rav um but there was an album that we listened to that i remember listening to and being like this feels to me like someone who likes rap music and is from russia and is trying to like lower their voice to sound like a cool rap guy who's you know black you know like that I was annoyed with. This, I actually, like, when listening to this, I was actually like, no, this does just sound like it's just him. Like, you know, like, I was like, I, mean, I don't know what else to do other than rap the way I'm rapping, guys, <laughs> you know? Called, like, something mixtape or something like that where it was just like, huh? Like, wait. Because the music sounded really epic and just, like, something like that. But when he's rapping, it sounds like he's, like, purposely lowering his voice. And it's like, why is he doing it? Like, like for every track. Like, it just it just felt like it was perpetrating. You know what I mean? Would you say this is on a Nas level? I honestly, I mean, especially compared to where Nas is now, you know, Ooh. like, I got to tell you, uh, looking over to the King's Disease uh, mixtapes or whatever, and then looking over to like listening to more of the Yodfather, I'm not going to lie to you. I want to listen to more of, uh, I want to hear more of what this Ruski's got to say, my friend. Mm. <laughs> like, I was feeling like there was a, like, it really did feel like, like, it's not like, Nas is completely whack these days, but there is an energy. There is a fire that is most definitely missing. It's the same way I feel about the Jizza, like the genius. Like, I feel like, oh, the genius, if you popped in any of his tapes right now, like the lyricism will be on the exact same point that it was 20 years ago. 
but he does not sound interested in it at all. And I don't know what, mm. you know what I mean? We're just like, just someone who's just gotten too comfortable in the idea. Well, I know my fans are going to listen to me. So here's just my rap saying it. And it's like, it, it's, I think I did a review a really long time ago uh, for like, I think it was the Pro Tools uh, Genius album, where I was just like, the lyricism is just as great as ever. It's like a house that's very well constructed, but just really drably painted, you know, just really boringly mm. painted where you're like, this structure is really good, but I don't want to look at it i i'm not interested you know what i mean like i can imagine that for so many people because this is like this amazing lyricism is being spit as if it's like the most boring thing in the world you know and that's mm. how i kind of feel about nas after like 2007 2008 so hearing this it really just feels like like my brain really was having like a wow it's like if nas got the battery kicked back into him and like it's the yeah. same way i feel about like uh, listening to the weekend it's like wow it's like uh listening to an r-rated michael jackson who didn't touch kids this is awesome like you know? yeah <laughs> like, I, 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 you know, I, I feel like we come down too hard on something that sounds similar to another thing. It's like, oh, uh, sounded similar. You're just a robot. It's like, hey, look, there's there's a different color to what they're doing here. Give it a chance. Now, if they're just ripping it off like Gorilla Black, if you ever listen to, do you remember who Gorilla Black was? He was like this rapper from the early 2000s who like just sounded like Biggie. Like he just sounded like Biggie Smalls. And it's like, that's so specific that it's like, you've got to be doing that on purpose, <laughs> you know? Um... But with this guy, I he actually, you know, he distincts himself. He brings up his, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, I was going to say Russian, but I think Ukrainian uh, heritage. Like, you know, he he makes that a, a staple. Like, he doesn't let you, you know, not th remember the fact that, like, no, wait, this is what I represent. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I actually really enjoy about him. So it's like, it's one of those things where, like, if you close your eyes and don't pay attention, oh, shit, is Nas back? And, but then you open your eyes like, oh, wait, that's, that's nah, that's just your old Drug, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I dug the album myself, too. I didn't really have much of a expectation going in. I'd never heard of Droog before. Uh, but yeah, I ended up liking it. I do share your sentiment that I hate when uh, lyrics aren't provided oh anywhere. Oh, my God. That was so annoying. And it's like, this is apparently this guy's like fourth album that he put out that year. Something to that effect. Like, he, the dude is fucking prolific and doing a whole bunch of shit. And I'm just like, wait. And no one is cataloging the lyrics of this? What the fuck is going on? Because I looked it up on uh, Genius to be like, oh, hey, no doubt I'm going to see it. And then it was just like the album cover. And I was like, oh, maybe I just click on the album cover. And it was just like nothing. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? Like, nobody? Really? Nobody, huh? The very fucking God brother's going to get to it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Out fucking standing. <laughs> God damn it, internet. Like, this is a guy who literally got uh, the type of hype that literally uh, most underground rappers would stab someone in the throat for. And no one's trying to catalog the lyricism of this guy. Like, what the fuck is going on? Not on Genius, not on not, Spotify. Not no, even like, on the Bandcamp. Not no even on band the Bandcamp. Yeah, like, what's going Looked on? Looked everywhere. No one thinks this is interesting enough to catalog, really. Because, like, I'm listening to this. I was like, whoa, this shit is so dope. I'm like, because the first track, I was like, damn, that was dope as shit. Let me see what these lyrics are so I can write this. What the fuck? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I wrote the exact same thing down. I hated it, especially because of, like, the intro itself was a decent enough track that I was just like, oh, man, I probably would have wanted to quote something from this. So, unfortunately, I don't really have too many quotes because like, I tried to write down everything I could, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. I hate having he, to do and, that. And he's rapping so much on this album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's rapping his ass off. So like, he is giving it to you. And uh, I tried to write down. There was one or two lyrics that I was like, huh? And, you know, having the lyrics would have been able to help a little bit. But like on uh, Cosmo, track two, again, another great track. And he has like one lyric who's just like, I'm going to go after your mom's like 50 Cent did DJ Khaled. And I was like, oh, my God, that was like a deep oh, cut. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember that shit. It? But then he had one lyric where he's like, I'm the rap Dame Lillard. <laughs> you the rap Dame Lillard. And it was like said in that way where it's just like, I'm like this, but you're like that. But it was just like, but you just, I don't get it. <laughs> like, you just said, I'm this great basketball player. And you're more like this great basketball player. Like, I don't get it. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I legit didn't understand what that line was supposed to be about. Like, was he good at one point in the battle? Like, is it like a, you know, like a Michael, ja um, what was that, that Kanye West line where he's like, I got a light skin girl, look like Michael uh. Jackson got a dark skin girl. Look. Like, maybe there was something like that going on, but I didn't know, you know? The only critique I think I wrote down was for uh, Yuri and how it started was very jarring. How the beat, like, didn't even have time to establish itself before Droog was, like, rapping over it. Yeah, like, yeah. they just started at the same time that it felt 
like it felt amateurish in production. Yeah, it's like you don't want to give me four bars here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like I didn't, I don't even know what's going on here. You're just diving right in. But I did like the uh, half the man you used to be, like Reverend Al line. Yeah, I'm Yuri, popped <laughs> like, me. Oh, that was just some social commentary for that. <laughs> and then uh, that and the fucking Orson Welles sample at the end. Oh yeah. And, wait, was that the one where he's like getting indignant at somebody? <laughs> yeah, he's recording. A uh, voiceover for I think uh, like a like a TV commercial, and he, I think this might be the one for the frozen peas. Nothing is more important than the simple act of people getting together. Good. Could I have one more go, Lawson, please? Sorry. What? Could I have just one more take of that? Sir? Why? I just did it right. Yeah. Right, look, I, I'm not used to having more than one person in there. One more word out of you, and you go. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I take where well, I take directions from one person under protest, but from two I don't sit still. But who the hell are you anyway? No, I'm the engineer. Well, why the hell are you asking me for another one? Well, I thought there was a slight bonk, and I would like just like to be safe. Jesus. What is a gonk? Do you mind telling me what that is? A bang from outside. A bang from outside. Like, I know by now everyone's seen the, um... Ah, oh, the French uh, Oh, champagne. him drunk as hell! <laughs> everyone's seen that. Uh, yeah. But way back when, the, the thing that everyone was talking about was his radio ads, where, like, he does one for... I, th- I think it's, like, some butcher, like, some meat brand. We know a little place in the American Far West where Charlie Briggs chops up the finest prairie-fed beef and tastes... This is a lot of shit, you know that. It's like, why is he like, so mad? Like, shut the fuck up, yeah, man. That's my thing, because I was like, why are you so mad at this? The engineer's just trying to do his job. He eventually gets up and leaves. He's like, fuck this, I'm out of here. It's like, dude, it's not like he was being a... It's not like a, a, the, the Christian Bale situation where the guy was hanging up the lights in the way of the shot. Good like, for you. <laughs> Good for you. Like, he was trying to... He was just like, dude, I'm not... They're going to get mad at me if I bring a recording to them that has a sound in the background. Like, I'm just... A gong. There can't be any gonks, Orson. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, uh, Yuri. And then it, I actually like the little uh, reference to the non situation. This is like so raw. They thought it was Escobar's. I mean, Pablo, did I lie though? <laughs> like you mm. know. And then he's like, I'm about to go on stage, kill the Apollo, like Ivan Drago. I was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> And then you had uh, the white Russian joint. Uh, again, he, he makes it very clear, <laughs> you know, who he is. In fact, doesn't he say at one point, he's just like, nah, I'm not, uh, like, I'm not uh, what so-and-so would call white. That's Anglo-Saxon. I'm clear. Like, <laughs> you know, because it, it, it reminded me of uh, Space Jam. Didn't Bill uh, Bill Murray say something like that where he's just like, so-and-so, that guy's not white. He's clear. <laughs> As to be like, he's super white. <laughs> but yeah. I really didn't care for White Russian. You have to enjoy the kind of goofiness of what's happening on this track. I'm like, I'm sipping on a White Russian, and she's sipping on a White Russian. Hey, you like that? <laughs> sort of poking you in the wrist. But yeah, like, I was like, what the? Okay. I think it was like it was a little too silly for me. But then the chick in the background, like kind of pulled it back on together be like oh wait there's actually a hot chick here who actually thinks i'm cool so it's all good you know like uh, she you know, was not helping out matters for me if anything she made it worse no i didn't care for the whole aesthetic of that one <laughs> uh, oh and then he had he, he keeps having these little lines where he's like uh these motherfuckers gave themselves a bad name like the new orleans pelicans and he's and he'll do little things where he's just like what <laughs> like huh <laughs> he's like you heard that right <laughs> Oh yeah, you too busy with your cookies. You got shortbread. It's just like oh, there's just like little shit. slick lines in here. It's just like oh hey, I see you. I missed that yeah, one. You know, the hook could have used a little work because I felt like it's like it needed something after those first two lines instead of eh, what everybody loves the White Russian. You know, like it just needed something else. You're right. It needed a second pass for sure. And then Bloody Mary. How'd you feel about that one? I liked Bloody Mary. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a solid track. I, I like that it was like a bit of a storytelling track. I like the uh, sort of like, you know, old country sounding instrumentation that's being sampled. Yeah, it was a very understated beat for the story. It really let you 
like it didn't distract from the story. It was it was right. really just like pay attention to this. I'm just gonna yeah. be over here because I have to be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, and the first line he throws in is like talking about the girl that he's hanging out with, and he said like I used to pull up with some brandy, like I want to be down. <laughs> I was like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like a general story about like this white girl in the projects who got shit for, for uh, like was especially like got shit because, you know, she's a white girl in the hood. So if she's using it, it stands out. You know what I mean? But then I was thinking like, well, wait, where are you from? I thought he was in Russia. Like, is it a black neighborhood in Russia? What's happening right now? Because <laughs> later on, he says like he was back in Russia back uh, back since 93 or, or maybe he had moved to. Uh, since then, because he talks about like, oh yeah, I was there when the first burger, uh, when the first McDonald's opened. It's <laughs> like it word. I was oh. right there. <laughs> um, but then on the end, of the, like the end of the track is, is like, I don't know if it's awkward or just like, <laughs> just right for what the story's doing. Because the whole the whole point is like, like oh, all the neighborhoods throwing dirt on Bloody Mary, and then it cuts to the sample of this old fifties movie of this guy going, "You fucking whore, you bitch," and and right afterwards he's just like, you know what I mean. <laughs> As if like he's gesturing like, oh, look at these guys speaking down. Ah, can you believe this? <laughs> yeah, he's like, not me. <laughs> but it's so quick that it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me scroll down. Yeah, I think uh, Babushka 4 Zinfandel uh, might be my favorite cut. Oh man, this was the point where I was like, okay, it is more than just Nas. It's like an, a bit of MF Doom mixed in with this. Like, cause the way yes. he just like, the lyrics, yeah. the rhymings just stumble over themselves with how much there's just like rhymes on rhymes on rhymes. And then with these like cool, well-placed backbeats that he's just like resting in off of the, you know, off of his flow, you know? Legacy, schmegacy, social media pages, I don't even check regularly. Let some clown disrespectfully heckle me. I'd rather kick back, bump Gregory Peckery. Ooh. Can I tell y'all how fucking weird this was that this dude would reference a Zappa track that I just happened to have listened to the album that it was on <laughs> earlier this week. And it's Whoa. not even like a prominent Zappa album either. That's awesome. It was like a late stage one. <laughs> That I was like, I don't think I've listened to this one all the way through in a minute. And I listened to that album and the song The Adventures of Gregory Peckery was on it. And to hear this dude reference that track at the end of this already dope section. Yeah, I, I was so fucking surprised. I was like, I got to quote that. That's too oh, awesome. And the way right after he says Gregory Peckery and then you hear the trumpets come in just so nicely. It was just like, holy fuck. Like it's that moment where you just relax back into your seat. You're like, oh, yeah. okay. I'm in good hands. <laughs> this was a smooth as silk instrumental too. Yeah. <laughs> like this song had everything going for it. All all my exes tens like oh. Roman numerals. Oh, <laughs> I was like, get out of here. <laughs> I was like, did anyone say that before? I feel yeah, like that has to have been said well, before. It's so good. You're like, there's no way this was the first guy who said this. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's like a, bedrock of hip hop kind of line. Right. Like the, the one thing I thought that was odd was the sample that was happening at the end. And it takes up like a third of the song where it's just like, they're speaking in Russian. And then after a while, someone just like, he says, and then you just hear, tack, 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 tack. Vodka. Walk, 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 walk. I'm like, what? What is happening in the song? <laughs> yeah, there were, there were some times like that. Like, <laughs> as much as I liked the Orson Welles bit, I thought it went on a little too long too. Like, yeah. eh, you know. You need to get a need to get someone who's uh, studied under RZA to to figure out how to how to clip these samples just so that they they're there and they give you the atmosphere, but they don't overstay their welcome. You know. And then 2001: A Space Odyssey. Uh, another dope track, uh, yep. like where he's just like the best feeling is when they doubt in you, but there ain't no doubt in you. <laughs> and then it's like, and then just oh man, these lines where he's like, I got weed louder than Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> I was like, God damn it! I'm from a place where the bitches got our knock need, and they got weed louder than Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> yes. Come on, what the fuck, dude? Oh man! And then who's the one line? Got a million dollars. Uh, I got a million dollars for every time Tupac said Hennessy on a song. And then in the background, he's just like, yeah, that's a lot. Lad <laughs> <laughs> lives. They just uh. Mwah. <laughs> this shit was a fun album too. Like the second half, though. Here we got. Four tracks in a row, the last four. Yeah, with all named after drinks. And we all got the features. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, oh, right, right after that interlude? What was up with that interlude, man? That was the one thing that the I was like, interlude. what is the Sector 7 interlude? Like this weird oh. fake outrage acting. <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah, goes, I listened it goes to a little nowhere. bit of it and I skipped it. I, I it, didn't care for that. It, it goes nowhere. It just it's, it's like, oh my god, these people like, like at first like the, there's the calm guy talking and you think he's in charge of everything, but then he seems kind of freaked out by what's happening at the end, and it's like, oh god, they're in it. Look at how big their fucking heads are. And then that means nothing. We just get to the next track. It's like, what? What the hell was that about? I want to give him the fucking MC Chris. The skits are bad, but there's only <laughs> one on here. So yeah. I'm not going to do it. You're right. Yeah, I guess space bar, they're in space, but that, that was so not, it's not like this album was about like, oh, sci-fi shit up to now, you know, like. Yeah. Is it Russian or is it space? Yeah, I guess uh, the, the Ruskies that uh, first went in space, uh, we, we got there first. They, that's what he, that's what this whole rap album's about, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. First man orbiting the, the earth, goddammit. <laughs> now, I think um, Yod, Little Ugly Mane, and mm-hmm. Billy Woods all killed it oh, on yeah. Meteor Man. Mm-hmm. These, these I thought that was a really are, strong cut. Yeah, in fact, it was one of those things where like, whoa, this album is getting better with more people coming onto it now. Like, it was just like, man, this guy's solid. How can we have any better of a time than this? And then it's like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> and like, wait, you got these guys just chilling the whole time? <laughs> I do beg to differ, though. Oh, no. Wait. I think, um... The God Fahim was like the weakest aspect of this album, and he kind of drug the. He was on the last two cuts. Uh, I can't remember what he said. Nothing I can't remember him as much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, a, yeah. Nothing of all of impactful. Them, yeah, of all of them, he was the most, like, ma- he maintained. He didn't, like, stand out. Yeah, like. I thought it was so weird to have him on two tracks in a row at the end. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, he wasn't bringing in any, like, energy to it. Yeah, because I liked Blue Hawaiian. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. And it did kind of feel like that dude kind of was a bit of a step down. Yeah. No, I liked uh, Nicholas F. on Mojito. I didn't have a problem with him on that. Yeah, I, I, I was confused. I was confused. Yeah, I forgot that there was a... Uh... Don Perignon and Blue Hawaiian he was on. I, I have half of this quoted. I, I don't have one or two words. I wasn't able to make it out. But on Mojito, when he says, uh, shit be bugged out like alien eyes, I be running to the plug like my Sally is dying. There's no st- there's no snakes in my circle. And he says something out I, I didn't make out. And he goes, uh, gonna cut him like an aloe plant if he's jelly inside. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That was so good. I was like, God damn, all right, you got this one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, can we just get this dude? So, like, when uh, Fahim was, like, taking up time, I was like, get the fuck, no, get out. <laughs> no, and that, and get that fun- cat out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? The, the last guy on the Meteor Man track, was it uh, U- Little Ugly Man? I like at first I wasn't feeling what he was doing, but then it was like he fit in with the beat. Like it was like this weird offbeat flow that he was doing, but then with how he was working over the beat, it like won me over. It was the weirdest thing because like it didn't feel like it was going conventionally, but then it was just like, huh? But he's actually kind of freaking it in a way that I, okay, all right. I was slightly falling off, then I got back on. Okay. <laughs> I gotta quote some of these lines. It says, "Well, first of all, he was just like, yeah, no such thing as writer's block when the rent due." And it says, uh, "Yeah, and that's nothing compared to what we went through." And it's like, "Oh, dang!" And it's like, "Why complain? Let the haters hate harder when bitches hit your line up with hearts like Drake Barber." I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> okay, yeah, the last guy did have <laughs> was like sip a tall glass of female ejaculate. <laughs> I was like, "What?" Oh the my fuck? god! <laughs> it's like that's I can't tell if that's dope or just gross. <laughs> like, let me see the drink trilogy. Yeah, mojito. Where I think like the whole verse, he's doing just the rhyme on mojito. I think like he just it's all that rhyme scheme the whole time. And I was like, holy shit! And uh, I remember that specific line where he's like, if I can survive my past, and the rest is, then the rest is nothing. And I just had that just like made me hopeful. And I was just like, yeah, you know, you're right, man. I mean, <laughs> we don't need this. We don't need this anxiety. Like, <laughs> throw off the chains of anxiety. You, you got this far. <laughs> I ended up walking away with a four on this. I got a four point five. Definitely a Ooh. solid, solid LP. Uh, for yeah, sure, that was good. for sure. Uh, definitely keep doing this thing. I am looking forward to more. That's that's for damn sure. Uh, I, there was a person in my Discord who has like a picture in his uh, in his profile of like one of his albums, and for the longest time I didn't know like what it was. I was like, oh, that's a weird looking thing. And then like then when I noticed it as I was listening to it, I was like, oh, well, I definitely got to get into this guy because 
<laughs> my, my fans on this shit. I gotta, I gotta jump on this shit. Now, from there, we move on to the main event of the night. It's Pantera with the great Southern This was sort of a roller coaster for me. Um, I've never really listened to much Pantera either. Truth be told. So this is my first time listening to this album the whole way through. They did themselves a huge disservice. I think they played themselves Mm. by putting arguably the worst two songs (laughs) at the very beginning. Like, I I don't know know what they were doing. (laughs) They, They were trying to get this theme across, which I think they kinda do that there's a problem with the metal scene and they're here to address it and I think they do it better in later cuts but the great southern trend kill which you know title track right got lines like buy it at a store from MTV to on the floor you look just like a star is proof you don't know who you are what the fuck is this? Like, this is garbage. It's so 90s. Ugh, mainstream is whack. We're going to tell you about it, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, I like the instrumentation again, but my God, the lyrics and, and the are vocal garbage. delivery, the vocal delivery, the way he's just like, uh, he's like, look here, bleh, fuck you all. Bleh. Like he specifically oh, is we'll doing get a, there. Bleh. He's we'll doing get there. Like, like that's what, on war nerve. Yeah, like what Trey Parker and Matt Stone on South Park would like parody as what metal sounds like. It felt like he was doing it genuinely. You know what I mean? Yeah, but. like <laughs> this is a thing, right? This album I think came out in '96. Mm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to con- uh, contextualize if this was maybe new for the time, but the way they got these like throat bleeding, screeching screams, it's so try hard sounding and it comes off pretty cringy. Like the singing for the most part, it sounds pretty dope. I think it is fine, but then it's just like, Wah! It's like, I don't know why we needed that. The very start of the album is just, wah! It just sounds like shit, man. Like, I don't need that. But, like, again, I wrote down, I hate how much I really, really liked the ending of the first track because the rest of it sucked so much, mm. but the music got so fucking badass at the end. Right, right. And I just thought of this album cover. It's just like, what? Were, were all metal album covers in the 90s just, like, angry animals? Like, you have a Pearl Jam. coiled snake. Yeah, you have a coiled yeah. snake on this one. You have Pearl Jam's, you know, really angry sheep. <laughs> oh, yeah, the sheep in the fence. Yeah. How, many, how many albums covers is this? <laughs> Who's the National Geographic photographer who got the fucking bank in the 90s? <laughs> Warner is the fucking worst. This is so fucking bad. It, like, I liked the music of it after a while when it was do- it was like chugging, chugging, and then it kind of did the thing where it like chugged and then like slipped into the flow of the song that was going a little bit more like, had a little bit more oomph to it. So like, I kind of wanted to like it for that. But yeah, like there was somebody, what, was this the one where he's like, oh yeah, truly fuck the world for all it's worth, every inch of the planet Earth, fuck myself, don't leave me out. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was like, I was so on the edge of just like, do I like this or is this whack? You know, like. <laughs> It really does come down to the little breaks. For every fucking second, the pathetic media pisses on what I am and judges me in one paragraph. Listen here. <laughs> Fuck you out. <laughs> it's like so stupid. Oh, like, no. Like, just like, yeah. This must feel really good to, like, put in a track. Like, they've been talking about me and I'm finally going to say something back. But it's like, but it's not that great of a you know, kiss off. So it just feels like no. you just seem bitter <laughs> that like critics are talking about music, you know, like the dude sucks. Like <laughs> I don't have all the specifics, but the dude does suck. And like, I could understand how someone listening to this would probably think that would be the case. And yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. He, he's, he's kind of a dick. Just screaming. Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> ew, hey, ew. T- I think uh, and Corn did it better. Uh, what was that one song? Hate, ah. hate. <laughs> like hey, you feel the hate a lot more in that, you know. 
Yeah, this song just dragged itself across the finish line, too. Like, it was bleeding, just in agony, just cr crawling and scratching itself. It was just like, this is really embarrassing. I hate it. And, like, I understand that this, again, like we said during the Under Oath thing, is the dude, you know, dealing with, you know, being on the other side of addiction and all the, all the feelings that came with that. You know, I totally get that. But... It's not coming across, at least not in these. I think it comes off way better in later tracks, but hmm. this album starts off really fucking weak. I think the first half is hmm. not good. What, what did you feel about Drag the Waters? Drag the Waters? Um, it was less cringy, yeah. I thought. More solid song. A bit of social commentary there about the rich kid who's, you know, his father's rich. He's the judge. He's the man. He's the god that got your sentence reduced. But in the back of his mind, he well knows what he'd find if he looked a little deeper in you. You know, like, yeah. Okay, so we talking some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought that was good. And I thought uh, Tens was all right. A bit more of a relaxed cut with um, no screaming, you know. Mm. Uh, still dealing with haters and whatnot, but <laughs> it doesn't come off as embarrassingly confrontational. Right, yeah. Like, there's a fine line with Genius as at one point said, like, this song is about how, you know, people act tough, but they're really, like, wimps. It's like, how important is that? Who gives a fuck, man? Yeah, this is, like, only so many shades removed from, like, a Limp biscuit, Or even Korn actually would do this sometimes. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna fight you, buddy. And it's just like, what? <laughs> Are you really trying to be a tough guy? <laughs> At least Limp biscuit has a sort of, like, a corny goof factor that even when they're being, like super in your face and confrontational at least the song still kicks ass like, mm. I, I, oh, like I'll go back and this. listen to Limp Bizkit and enjoy it in a weird way more so than some of the tracks on here anyway yeah, you can enjoy the novelty of that I feel a lot more than the anger that he's producing on here it's just yeah I feel you need a sort of novelty anchor to level that yeah mm -hmm. uh, 13 steps to nowhere I was not feeling it was just 13 13 13 horse yeah he said horse I, I I didn't like that but I did kind of like the track um this this is where I think the album turned around for me was starting with 13 steps to nowhere but specifically on uh suicide note part one and two that's yeah. where I was like that's where it sold me yeah, yeah. When when you get the the first track, that's like a lot more slower, letting you really like feel the emotion of what he's saying. The uh, what do you say? Would you look at me now? Can you tell I'm a man with these scars on my wrist to, uh, to prove I'll try again? You know, it's just yeah. like Ooh. whoa. <laughs> and then when it cuts into part two, where you're just like whoa. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this recently with the was like the the junkie keeper or whatever on on the Fishbone album. Oh, pray to the junkie maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the junk you make, where it has like it has the intro track that kind of explains it and sets the tone, and then like then the mm. then the actual like part two. This does that. it so fucking well of like the breakneck jarring switch up between one and two is so fuck. It's deserved. Yeah. W w when two kicks in, because I have written down like part one best song so far, and then a track <laughs> two uh, part two comes up, and it's like, well, not anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, this immediately is just like, holy shit, taking it again another step further. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really dope, incredible instrumental on part two. And just like, the lyrics are so, like, it pulls you into, honestly, what kind of feels like both sides of it, where it's just like, you know, uh, the refrain is like, don't you try to die like me. It's livid and it's lies. Like, make graves descending. Drah. Like, we're, so it feels like it's speaking out against it. But then on the other hand, it's kind of going like, don't judge these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you help anyone who doesn't want it, doesn't need it, doesn't want your shit advice when a mind's made up to go ahead and die? What's done is done. So why cry? You know, and, it's, and like, he's bringing up like, you know, these people aren't just like bitching, right? Like, tortured history, addict of misery. You're like, this exposes me. Like, you know, it's like, there's reasons why people feel the way they feel right and it, i feel like it respects that while still kind of like not letting it just all the way be you know just glorifying it you know what i mean in a way that i feel like a lot of heavy metal tracks can end up doing you know it, it's interesting because like yeah i agree with that but then i thought living through me came off kind of judgmental and like looking down yeah because that was next yeah yeah with the um and uh, apologies for this it's fucking i was like ugh. 
Uh, spitting teeth, aura lust, alley fuck, yeah. angel dust, anal whore, bleeding knees. It's times like this to pray for murder. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. like if there's an angle to it that I missed, like maybe this was like from a point of view or something that I didn't pick up on when I was listening to it. It just felt like... It felt like overly uh, gory imagery for the sake of it. Like, angel dust, oh, anal whore, bleeding knees while she's t getting rammed. Like, really, really? It's like, what? It's like, again, like you just said, like, people, you know, need help. But now you're painting this picture of just, like... It doesn't feel sympathetic, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it feels judgmental. It feels like you're looking down your nose at people who are, who are having it rough. And I don't know. I think yeah. that was a misstep. Um, yeah. Because honestly, from here, I think flood into the underground in America, mm. into sandblasted skin. I said oh, this God. last time, I'm going to say it again. This album is straight, straight on to morning. Fucking banger after banger after banger. Flood is incredible. I thought this one, especially with the smooth transition out of living through me into flood i missed it like i thought we were selling the same track um mm. i thought this was really strong i thought the storm sounds uh like the oh, thunder yeah. thunder crashing and the rain i thought that added a lot to the overall feel of it yeah yeah um, i get that kind of make it feel like a centerpiece i did think the uh fake 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 on Underground in America was corny. Yeah. And it's another track that came off kind of preachy to me. Yeah. But I thought it was really strong too. And then fucking Sam Blessed Skin is just like, let's fucking go. This is goddamn kick ass track where it feels Mega like all the. Smasher. <laughs> yeah. We got all we got all the serious stuff out of the way. We got all the judgy talk. We got all that. Here's just a straightforward fucking bash your fucking teeth in, mm. like balls to the wall, badass metal track. And I thought it was so funny how like I, I like I was going ahead, and I was listening to it, and I was taking my notes, and I started calculating my score, and the beat started coming back <laughs> <laughs> because I like I, I didn't it. realize it wasn't over, and there's yeah. that silence. <laughs> you got weird out. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on for like 30 seconds to a minute and all of a sudden it's like oh shit it's coming back <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah he's coming I thought back that was again. so cool <laughs> no, remember you told that story about like listening to that Weird Al album where oh for fuck's <laughs> sake no <laughs> at home like 6th grade like 10 11 years old I'm sitting there doing my math homework at the kitchen table with my fucking Sony disc man <laughs> listening to off the uh, off the deep end and what is it? Um, I forget what I think it's what uh, you don't love me anymore. Mm. That like super like low key extreme style parody. I, I got a funny feeling that you don't yeah. love me anymore. That one. <laughs> you put oh, my face out on one? the barbecue wow. grill. Now my scars are all healing, but my heart never will. <laughs> like really great track, whatever. It just ends on such like a. <sighs> and I'm sitting there. That's awesome. I don't realize that the album is not done and I'm just sitting there with my headphones still on just doing my homework and the fucking ah, 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 <laughs> kicks in and I just send my fucking headphones across the table like through them, really right off you. my fucking head <laughs> that shit was mean that motherfucker weird Al you knew exactly what the fuck you were doing that shit was fucked up that shit was wrong Look if I ever meet wings. you, <laughs> I'm bringing that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> as starstruck as starstruck as I'm gonna be, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna want to say a good bit of like complimentary shit. But I'm gonna kick myself if I don't hold his feet to the fire <laughs> you of the ear splitter polka. <sighs> but uh, what would you come away with this album with? Ah, uh, oh, man. I don't know. Yeah. I fucking... <laughs> I took my average and I came out with a three. But that doesn't feel right because the second half is so good. Like, I gotta say at least a three and a half. But I think the first half is so weak that that's like almost half a fucking album that I'm just like... Uh, yeah, eh. I, I gotta give it a three and a half uh, as well. Like... Yeah. 
you know, like I, I can't act like the like I did enjoy this as a full project and was am more able to pick out individual songs that I can be like, oh yeah, I remember what happens in that one and that one and that one, right? But yeah, like I can't help but feel that even in the songs that I liked, it would just be like, why, why did he say that? And what was that about? <laughs> you know, like yeah. yeah, I feel like especially late '90s metal, it's like you just kind of it's almost listening to like early '90s rap. You just know there's gonna be some kind of off kilter, yeah, shit some little that's uneducated like, shit. <laughs> some I, I don't know shit. why I had to bring up lizard people, but yeah. <laughs> wish you didn't do that. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm thinking about it. I can't stop thinking about it. It's like, yeah, oh exactly. no, does this person actually think this way? Uh, it colors so much of the music now. <laughs> <laughs> See, but if you already think Phil Anselmo sucks going into a Pantera listen, it's like, well, I'm sure he's going to say some fucked up shit. The guy's an <laughs> asshole. But is the album any good? Does it sound good? And yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was good. And I um, I want to thank everybody who listened, first of all. Uh, big, big thanks for spending your time with us, like always. But I do also want to thank the folks who um, sent in the requests. Mm. Even though we got a fuck ton with our Black November deal, hmm. um, going three albums per show um, has really helped us um, blow through these way faster so we can catch up. And we, we discussed this because I don't want to... We're just getting to the albums from last year. <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like Dr. Goatman is just this wealthy benefactor over here. <laughs> oh, the but <Medici> like, clan. <laughs> it's, it, I, it, it, it needs to be addressed because we talked about like we don't want to have two requests or possibly three requests from the same requester in an interview, interview because it's just like, oh yeah, this is the Dr. Goatman show. Yeah. But like... The, the onus is on you, uh, you know, uh, ca- uh, viewers. Viewers like you support this show, so if you want to... <laughs> yeah, fucking add, add some diversity. Don't let them have all the fun. <laughs> exactly, but like, I, I was realizing it because what we try to do, and I said this last week, is we try to get the album is to be a total of two hours. So I was trying to skip around, trying to pick three albums that would come out to two hours. And like, we were skipping around so much that I figured even if we were skipping around Dr. Goatman requests now, eventually we'd be left with nothing but Dr. Goatman requests. So it's like, let's just fucking go in order. Let's just do what we need to do. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may. (laughs) <laughs> exactly, because there are a good bit of people in here. I don't want to make it sound like Dr. Goldman is the only person in here. No, for sure. But it, it's a majority. Uh, <laughs> it's at least half. And this is America. We we need to correct this. So so this is the call to arms, uh, fellow listeners. Uh, to, you know, to, like I said, don't let them have all the fun. Get, get your asses to that Kofi. <laughs> yeah, head on over to the Kofi. That's k o dash f i dot com slash going off. That's g o i n o f f. We do get to them eventually, (laughs) is the moral of the story. Yeah. Outside that, we're on Twitter, we're on Patreon, we're on Ko-fi, we're on YouTube. We're everywhere, quite frankly. And um, everywhere you look, there's a face. Somebody who needs you. (laughs) Hit him with the links. Our oh, sake. that's right. Uh, uh, I ran out of energy. <laughs> you either go to kofi.com slash uh, going off to get those album requests in o- over I on this podcast. That. Yeah, oh, no, <laughs> right, right, word. Uh, and <laughs> I was definitely listening and not playing on my phone. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, half the, half the people have already tuned out. It's fine. Hey, I'm like, we're at the end of it. Oh no, <sighs> or, or uh, you know what I'm saying? You can uh, hit me up if you want to do a music, movie, or stream request. Uh, Kofi.com slash rap critic. That's right. Uh, I do a uh, uh, stream album request where if you just want to, you know, come through, listen to us, join the people that are listening in and, and talking shit about the album that we're going to be listening to, you know, or uh, best of requests. I also do those too. Like people can request like an artist, and, you know, I take my time to dig through their discography and go, like, all right, what's the absolute best of this artist, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'd be doing those. Get what I act like you want. Also, I take a request during.
during the stream, some people, uh, look, they'll donate $5 and, you know, I'll play a song that they want me to play. And I just found uh, a new worst rapper of all time uh, through that yesterday. Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't know if you know, what is it? Fly Youngster, whoever the fuck he is. The, there's some seven minute song where this dude's just rapping all off beat and I was just like it was like this man is just like drowning in the rhythm of this song and I was just like oh my god I think we found a new because I was like I was talking right before the track played and I was like and someone asked like who do you think the worst rappers are and I was like oh, I don't know like Lil B uh, Soul Boy uh, uh, you know uh, Bizarre somewhere in there and then they requested this song and I was just like Okay, this guy's officially number one, and all the other guys are number four. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, uh, you That's know, I, funny. Yeah, yeah. It was just so bad, and it went on for so long. I was like, well, I feel like I've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I got sufficient evidence here. But yeah, or uh, patreon.com slash rap critic if you want to uh, join in for ongoing uh, support where you get to join the Patreon Discord chat with me and fellow fans uh, and, you know, talk shit about music and share memes and all that fun, sexy stuff. Uh, get with it. Act like you want it. Plus, you get to see episodes and movie podcasts early. So that's, you know, I'm giving you this incentive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I'm doing it for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, hell yeah. <laughs> get with it. Act like you want it. But yeah, yeah, until next time, unless there's something else I forgot. Uh, <laughs> nope, that's it. You want to land this plane? Our yeah, city. yeah, let's let's get this. this helicopter down. Whoa, 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 let's try to get around those wires there. Uh, all right. Oh, look out, look out. <laughs> until next time, I'm Rap Critic. And I'm Muse. And when I became the son, I shone love into the man's arms. When I became the son, I shone love into the man's arms. <laughs>